In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the circular flow of income diagram. It's a rather simple, but still useful representation of activity in an economy. Now, as you might have guessed, the model gets its name, the circular flow of income, because, well, it's a big circle. But along this circle, there are two sets of actors that are participating in the economy. The first set of actors are what we're going to call the households. These are the individuals like you and I. We've actually spent the first few weeks of this course studying the behavior of individuals, trying to understand why people do the things that they do. Now, the second broad category of actors are what we will call the firms. It's in this section of the course we will study firm behavior, trying to understand what it is that firms do. Now, along this circular flow of income diagram, there are two separate types of economic activity. The first type is what we will call the product market. And in the product market, it's the firms that provide goods and services to the households. So, whenever you go to the grocery store to buy food, you're participating in the product market. Whenever you go buy a television at Best Buy, you're participating in the product market. And even when you visit the doctor when you're sick, you're participating in the product market, purchasing those healthcare services. So in the product market, it's the firms providing goods and services to the households. Now, as familiar as we are with the product market, we are much less familiar with the other side of the economy, what we will call the resource market. And it's this side of the economy that's going to be more of our focus today. In the resource market, it's the households that provide resources to the firms. And then the firms use those resources to make the products that they end up giving back and selling back to the households. So we have two different types of economic activity the product, and the resource markets. Well, let's take a little bit of time and think a little bit more about what types of resources flow from the households to the firms. Well, it turns out there are going to be four main types of economic resources that we will consider. The first is what we will call land. Now, the land that we're going to talk about refers more than just the land on which we stand. It refers to all of the natural resources, which includes the land, but also the water, the air, the vegetation, the minerals, all of these natural resources we're going to lump into one category and call it land. Now the second broad type of resources are what we will call labor. These are all the human resources. And it's important to note that this refers to not just your physical labor, but also your mental labor. Not just what you can physically do, but also the labor which involves you thinking. Now, the third broad type of economic resource is going to be what we call capital. And it turns out that outside of an economics course, people often think of the term capital as referring to money. But in economics, capital has a very different meaning. It refers to all the physical resources, like the tools, the machinery, the factories, the computers, the trucks, all of those types of resources, those physical resources that help us make products. Now, we can have all the land, labor, and capital that we need, but unless we have this fourth resource, it turns out firms aren't able to produce products. Because this fourth resource, what we will call entrepreneurship, is the resource that employs the land, labor, and capital and puts them to use to make products. It's this resource that is the most important. And it turns out it is understanding this resource which is going to be most of our focus in this lesson. 